Now we are going to begin looking at scripting and understanding the parts of a script so that we can build off the fundamentals later on. Whenever you create a new script inside of Unity, you're gonna see a whole lot of stuff all at once. And I think it's worth just really quickly talking through what everything is so that you can start to understand what you can manipulate and what you probably should not. Whenever you first create a script, you're going to have to give it a name. And any script you create inside of Unity is going to default to a mono behavior. We'll talk about this in a second, but it's important to understand that whatever name you give the script is going to automatically be the name of the class whenever it is created and you open it up inside of your script editor. So this name right here will, will match whenever you create the script and you open it up. If these names do not match and you're inheriting from mono behavior, then you will probably get a compiler error and it won't like that. So if you are inheriting, that's um, this right here from mono behavior, which is a lot of Unity scripts, any script that you plan to attach to a game object, and it's also gonna be the default, but if you're doing that, then you need to make sure that those names match. And they will automatically when you create the script. But if you try to do any kind of renaming, then that could be a problem if you're not aware of it. These statements at the top are called namespaces. And one way to think about those would be containers that have a lot of code and libraries that you can use. Um, you can technically access them without using the namespace, but this is just easier to read whenever you're coding. Don't worry about those for now. We've already talked about the class name and how this is the name of this object type and it, it is matching the script. So if we create a new type of fundamentals, then this is the type of that object. This is where all of our code goes underneath that. Inside of the brackets right here, you have your class name inherits from mono behavior and then brackets. To say a little bit more about mono behavior, not only is it the default, but mono behavior allows us to attach a script as a component to a game object, which a lot of times you'll wanna do. And much, much later on, we may talk about how, how to incorporate scripts that are not mono behaviors. But if you're starting off, just plan to, to use the default and just think about attaching scripts as components to game objects. And part of what mono behavior gives us are these pre-made methods that we can call for ease of use. So for example, by inheriting from mono behavior, we get access to a start function that automatically gets called when we hit the play button and update, which gets called every frame. So you can think if this were some kind of player class on start, we may want to set health to max. We may want to move to starting position and so forth. We only wanna do this once. And inside of update, we may want to detect input, move while the key is held. These are the two starter functions that will help you get some initial code running, but it is important to understand what they're doing and that we get access to both of these because we're using mono behavior. So that, that's where that comes from. Okay, so let's look at that inside of Unity. If you were following along with the previous video, you might recognize that we've done some stuff here. I'm just gonna really quickly show you how to clean that up. And then in future videos, if you need to clear anything out, you'll know how to do that. All you need to do is come down to your assets. I'm going to delete the material I made by highlighting it and pressing the delete button. I'm also going to get rid of my cube and my sample cube, delete. Again, those were game objects and this was a file on my hard drive. So in this case, I actually deleted you know, an actual file, whereas this is just deleting objects inside of my scene file. Remember, this is my scene file, and these, these are the objects inside of my scene. Now let's make a new script. If I right click inside my hierarchy, first I'm going to create a new game object. I'm gonna press F2, or you can click it and wait. And we're gonna call that level controller. Good practice is to reset the transforms, or some people say zero out the transforms. That just means move it to world origin by doing 000, 000, 000, 111. There's also a short hand way to do this by clicking up here and clicking reset, and you'll just reset this component to its default. Now our level controller, let's just keep everything simple and create a new script and call it level controller. So I right clicked down here inside of assets, create and C-sharp script. 
I'm going to call this level controller. Now, if you remember from earlier, once you have created that script and it does a little bit of processing and then compiles and creates it, you don't want to just press F2 and rename it because then it won't match the class name. So these need to be the same. Be aware of that. Don't, don't just start renaming things without realizing that it needs this name to connect whenever we uh, drag and drop it onto a game object. So to attach my script to my level controller, we can just drag and drop it like that. And we are now assigning the level controller game object, the level controller component, which we can put some behavior inside of this. Now I wanna show you something. If I delete the script from my assets, just highlight it and delete. Watch what happens. If we click on level controller, you're gonna see this script missing mono script. If you ever come across this, it typically means that either it, it's losing the reference somehow, like you reorganize things and it can't find the script that you originally attached, or it means that you accidentally deleted the script. And I wanted to do this to show you that if you ever come across this, it means that it can't find the script that you originally attached. So if this ever happens, just right click and remove component, save. Okay, so now it's like we never created that script that we created before. So I'm gonna show you the other way that you can create a script. If you click on add component and you try to search for something, let's type in level controller, and it does not exist. If we click new script, create an add, you'll see that it not only creates the script, but it also attached it to the game object as well. Now, some of you may find this easier to do because you're, you're doing it in one place and then it does all the hookup stuff. But later on, when you want to start creating scripts that are not mono behaviors, and what I mean by that is that you don't want to attach to a game object, you just want to reference down here, you can't create it this way, right? Because you don't want it to be a mono behavior. So my personal preference, I'm going to show you one last time, remove, and you see that we still have our script down here. We just removed the reference to the script right there. So if we had another, if we create a new game object and call this sample, we can apply this script, this level controller script on multiple things, right? We may not want to. In this case, we probably don't wanna do that because we only want one level controller, but you could make like a health script and just attach this component to multiple things. So when you create a script, it doesn't exist on the game object. It exists down inside of your asset files and you are referencing it by attaching it to the game object. So this game object will reference a script down here and this game object will reference a script down here. Now to clean this up, I'm going to take my sample and delete it. We'll see my level controller. Just make sure that you have your script, you have your game object name level controller and you have attached the script right here. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm, I'm trying to do this in a way in which I'm just being very loose with how the stuff is attached and, and built. Because I wanna show you, you don't need to follow a list of steps and then it either works or it doesn't. It's really important that you understand how to break the stuff down and what is really happening behind the scenes. So this is not where our script exists. This is where our script exists and we are referencing it. And this is just a game object and this is just a series of components that we have defined. Now, I also wanna show you another thing we're going to use Visual Studio in our examples. And if for whatever reason you don't have the hookup there, like maybe you're not sure why your class names aren't recognizing in your scripts or whatever, you can go over to Edit, Preferences. Inside of External Tools, you can actually define any script editor you want right here if you prefer a different one. I'm gonna set mine to Visual Studio 2019. And so what that means is if we've set that up, if we double click the script, you may need to log in or something, it's going to open up and you're gonna see this default script that we looked at previously in the concept slides. So you're gonna recognize this is our class name that we created. This is our mono behavior because we are inheriting from mono behavior by default and that's what allows us to attach it on the game object as well as have access to start and update and we we probably want to use the unity engine classes and functions that will make our lives easier so now we have our level controller we have our level controller script we can open that up 
and we can start to type code if we want to. Now I wanna show you one more thing about a script. If I were to right click on the script and go to show in Explorer, you can see that our level controller.cs file exists on our machine inside of our project assets. What this means is that we could create a script, we could put it into a different project if we want to. These are files that we can pull out and put into different projects if we want. In our hierarchy, these are objects that exist inside of our scene. Those are a little bit trickier to export and move into other scenes, but these are just files. I wanna show you that if I come to my level controller script and if I right click and do open with, I can open this script with a number of different script editors. Now I could use a different script editor and whether I do this inside of Visual Studio 2019 or if I do this inside of WordPad or just to show you that we can, I'm gonna open it up in Notepad. Now you see, we have everything here. I wouldn't recommend it, but if we really wanted to, we could edit our script inside of Notepad. So I'm just leaving a little comment here, slash slash example comment. I'm gonna save it, close out. And you'll see if we come back into Unity, we have now affected the script. Now it would be better to have done that inside of Visual Studio because Notepad is very few features. But this is just to show you that whether you're in Visual Studio 2019 or you're in some other script editor, it doesn't matter. In the end, we are just editing our levelcontroller.cs file. And however you decide to do that, be up to you. But it's important to understand what we're really doing here. We're using Visual Studio 2019 to edit our levelcontroller.cs script.